Hi, welcome. This is our Prevention Thursday with Steph and Maddie. Tonight, we're going to be talking about dating abuse. As always, I want to invite everyone to ask any questions that they have in our chat box, and we can get to those at the end of the evening, but please ask them whenever they come up for you. As we begin tonight, Maddie is going to define for us what dating abuse is, and then she's also going to talk about what the Dating Abuse Prevention Program does for our community. Thanks, Steph. My name is Maddie Hahn. I'm the manager of the Dating Abuse Prevention Program. I'm really excited to highlight teen dating abuse and our prevention program this evening. When we're talking about dating abuse, by definition, it is the pattern of unhealthy behaviors used to gain and maintain power and control. The Dating Abuse Prevention Program reaches thousands of students every year. We provide age-appropriate curriculum and discussion to schools, groups, and communities throughout Morris County, addressing the dynamics of dating abuse and its impact on teens. In the school setting, we see students grades fifth through university level. It is our hope to be able to meet with students at each grade level countywide to continuously discuss dating abuse each year. Our work with university students includes RA trainings, freshman year seminar discussions, athletic trainings, awareness events, and much more. Another resource I wanna share this evening is our teen dating abuse counseling. As we discussed last week when we reviewed the impact of DV on children, GBWS offers support for teens who have been exposed to domestic violence. But we also provide this support for those who are experiencing unhealthy and abusive relationships as well. Thanks for letting us know what the Dating Abuse Prevention Program does, Maddie. So now we're gonna hear a little bit about the history of the program and how it became a prevalent need right here in Morris County from our VP of Community Relations, Regina Bram. The overarching mission of JBWS is the prevention of domestic violence. With that in mind, we started going to schools in the early 80s, speaking about family violence. But in one of our classes, a teacher pulled us aside and pointed to a girl with a bruised and swollen eye. She explained to us that she believed that her boyfriend had given it to her and that he would be in one of our other classes. She wanted to know, did we have any presentations that specifically addressed abuse within teen relationships? We had to say no. This was 1986. No one was talking about teenage dating abuse. So we went to work trying to learn more. We researched the topic and found very little in the literature. We relied on the experiences of teachers and police officers who were witnessing cases of abuse and the stories shared with us by the courageous teens and parents who were going through it. The result was our JBWS Teenage Dating Abuse Prevention Program that addressed education and counseling for teens experiencing abuse. This program was one of the first of a handful in the country and was featured in Seventeen Magazine, the NBC Sunday Today Show, and the New York Times. Today, there's a wealth of information on teen dating violence, showing an estimated one in three teens is a victim of some form of physical emotional, or sexual abuse in a relationship. And the effects can be long-lasting, resulting in increased substance abuse, unhealthy weight control behaviors, pregnancy, missed school, suicide ideation, and more. We are so grateful to the teachers, administrators, and student assistance counselors who took this problem seriously and opened their doors to us in those early days. It would take 24 years after we first started our program before the state of New Jersey would pass legislation providing education and policies on teen dating abuse. Today, the program has expanded to reach nearly every public and private high school in Morris County. A dozen middle schools, colleges, Girl Scouts, athletes, parents, and more for a total of about 10,000 people each year. In closing, if you ever doubt that a single interaction with a student can make a difference, remember the words of this student who contacted me three years after I spoke to her college class. She writes, I should have written to you a long time ago, 
but I guess it's never too late to thank someone. Your lecture really did reach someone, me. I felt like someone else knew what I was going through. It was like you were speaking directly to me. It took two months following your presentation for me to break up with my boyfriend. It was the hardest thing I ever did, but it was the best thing I ever did. Thank you for your lecture. I will never forget how much it changed my life. Today, here's my call to action to all those watching. If you have access to a youth group, school or college group, parent or employee group, invite an educator from the Dating Abuse Prevention Program to speak with them. It's the one thing that you can do that has the potential to reach hundreds. Thank you so much for your support. Wow, thanks Jeannie so much for sharing a little bit about why it's so important that we have the Dating Abuse Prevention Program right here at JBWS. So Maddie, can you tell us a little bit about how the program has developed since it was started? Yeah, absolutely. So as discussed in our introductory video, the Dating Abuse Prevention Program, also known as DAP, has shifted throughout the years to continually bring education to students and discuss dating abuse relevant to where, what teens are experiencing in today's society. While the core dynamics of dating abuse remain consistent throughout the years, our conversations continually evolve to highlight what teens are experiencing. Some of the additions to our program throughout the years include technology abuse, social media, online dating, and other related cyber safety. Thanks, Maddie. So what does a typical presentation look like and how has it changed since everything has gone on with the response to the COVID pandemic? So our typical classroom presentations are provided in the health class setting, assemblies, clubs, and to different groups. We are invited to schools through teachers, student assistant counselors, and various school personnel. When the pandemic hit in March, DAP quickly pivoted to continually provide this education to students in a new and exciting virtual format. We have added virtual components such as the use of online polling programs. These useful tools have allowed students to remain engaged in conversation, whether they are at home or in the classroom. This provides the space for students to anonymously contribute thought and feedback to our discussion. While the onset of virtual learning last spring definitely presented a challenge, I'm so happy to share the enthusiasm and support we have received from students and teachers alike. Students report feeling safe and lacking judgment when they engage in these conversations where they don't have to verbally share in front of their peers like they do when we're all in the classroom space together. We absolutely can't wait to be back in the classroom space with students and teachers across the community. However, these new and engaging virtual components will definitely remain a staple even when we re-enter the classroom space. Thanks, Patty. Maddie, I love how pivoting in response <clears throat> actually turned out to be a great thing, so that's really cool. How else does the Dating Abuse Prevention Program reach students? So another way DAP is able to reach students is through our annual youth conference. Traditionally, this is co-hosted in November with the support of Randolph High School. Peer leaders, teachers, student assistant counselors, and other school professionals from high schools across Morris County are invited to participate in this conference. Over the years, the youth conference has presented a variety of activities to engage with students including guest speakers, panelist discussions, and also planning for Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Our planning for Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month is one of the really fun things that I love we get to do in the conference. Peer leaders all come together and they discuss and share ideas with other schools about how they are going to raise awareness come February for Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. However, in light of the continued COVID-19 pandemic, this year for our ninth annual youth conference, we will be holding it virtually in February 2021, so during Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Any students, teachers, school personnel joining us this evening who may be interested in our workshops or the youth conference, please definitely reach out and let us know. I would love to 
follow up with this conversation and share those exciting details with you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Maddie. So how can someone get involved with the dating abuse prevention program? So there's a couple different ways that students and community individuals can get involved with the dating abuse prevention program. But this year, I'm really excited to share the introduction of the dating abuse awareness ambassadors. This is a fantastic way for students to get involved in the conversation and participate in raising awareness in their school community. The Dating Abuse Awareness Ambassadors will help plan for our youth conference, participate in DAP workshops throughout the year, engage in continued conversations about dating abuse. And again, to any teachers, school personnel, parents, and students, if you are listening to this conversation this evening, please reach out. I would love to elaborate more about the Dating Abuse Awareness Ambassadors and what that will entail and how you can really help your community. Another way to get involved with the community is inviting a DAP educator to speak with your group, club, organization. Another thing I love doing in this program is working with Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts on their various awards. We participate in health fairs and various other community events. I love that. So many different ways to get involved. And I think <clears throat> as we think about Domestic Violence Awareness Month and, you know, everyone's getting aware right with our sessions and then that one thing that action so perhaps getting act involved with teen dating is your call for one thing for change this month so thank you so much Maddie and thank you to everyone it doesn't look like we had any more questions come in so I want to thank everyone for joining us and we hope to see you next week <laughs>